I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through, three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. We're back! Woo! After... It's been a hiatus. Yeah! Uh, cause... Cause I'm a fucking nerd. Yeah, are um, you gonna tell him what happened? Yes, so... Uh, the week that we were supposed to record... Uh, I started feeling sick on Thursday, like, my face was tingling, and, like, whatever, and I found some, like, swollen lymph nodes, I'm like, uh, I don't know what I got, but whatever, I'll get some coffee and some yogurt, and I'll just deal <laughs> the with it. The universal medicine. <laughs> I mean, I was driving, I had to drive an hour and a half, actually, oh. well, an hour and a half one way, so basically three hours. Yeah. So, I was like, well, yogurt... Because yogurt's probably better for me than most stuff that I could eat right now. And coffee, because I need the caffeine. So... The, the, the base of the food pyramid, some would say. Yes, yes. For, for people who have, like, crippling insomnia and problems with sleeping, it is the basis of the food pyramid. Um, that, that and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Because they're easy to make. They're cheap. Um... <laughs> And that's about it. That's that's about it, honestly. <laughs> Can I, I mean, buy you an branded, Instapot? Can I buy you an Instapot? I, I have a I have an uh air fry. I have stuff. Okay. It's just it's just peanut butter and jelly's cheap and like I'm living on less than minimum wage right now. So there's <laughs> life is life is hard for a PhD researcher. Have, okay. Have you and this is the I find these actually good. Um, I'll call them white trash Swiss rolls, and that's when you put the you you really flatten out that white bread, and then you spread mm -hmm. the peanut butter and jelly on it, and then you roll it into a roll, and then you slice it up. It's phenomenal. I've never if you I've haven't never done had it, that. I recommend it. I highly recommend it. It's delicious. God. Oh boy, I actually made stew the other weekend. Ooh. Um, and then that basically was all I ate this week. Uh, Fair. So you know what the secret to a good oh wait was it a beef based or was it a chicken based? It was beef based. It was beef based. The secret to a a, a, a like a, a cubed stew beef that comes out pretty decent. Throw in some tomato sauce of any kind of literally mm -hmm. tomato paste ragu to spaghetti sauce. Just throw that in there. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I I was like I was like putting everything together. And I'm like I think I'm missing something. And then like I was looking through my cabinet and I saw a thing of tomato paste and I was like. Perfect. Duh, duh. There you go. <laughs> and I just, I just dumped it in, like that, it adds that umami, that umami. It, I don't know if that's what a umami is, but so, it so definitely it, it, it is. So, so tomatoes, corn, mushrooms, uh, fish skin all contain naturally uh, MSG, monosodium uh, glutamate. They, they, they're all oh. natural, natural sources of it. So it literally does add umami those things or like i okay. just have a bag of msg on the kitchen counter to sprinkle on things it's sacrilege it's not but sacrilege. not really it adds like if you i if mean for dish, white people it is if you don't want to add tomatoes to something because you don't like tomatoes but you still want like that like um, that oh then you just do a little sprinkle sprinkle and you're good to go that umami that God. umami Mommy um, in bed. Anyway, so what about your? <laughs> so so then what ends up happening is on Saturday I sleep completely through when we were supposed to record, um yep. by like an hour because I, I remember waking up and being like, oh shit, Brandon's message. I'm so tired <laughs> still. Um, and I was like, it's been so long. Brandon probably has stuff that he's doing now because he's an adult with a child. <laughs> I'll just put it off to another day. And then the next day, uh, I was even worse. <laughs> and, then the next so, day, and then the next day, I was like, 
I haven't heard from John, and I'm on Twitter, and I just see you tweeting about hospitals. And oh, I don't think that progressed well. Yeah. So what ends up happening is during the week we were planning on recording, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I went to the doctor on Tuesday because like whatever it was wasn't going away. Um, and clearly I had something wrong with me, right? Uh, I didn't know what the fuck it was. Um, I actually thought it was a kidney stone in the moment. Turns I out I'm wrong. remember you telling but, me that. But there are other stones involved in this story. Don't worry. It's it's not oh, over. Nice. It's not a over. A Roger? A Roger? Um, there's a Robert later, but that will get into oh, that. Robert Stone. Okay. Yeah, it's a Robert Stone. Um, so, so then I then I go to the doctor. Um, and they get me in. They set me up with an ultrasound and some blood work. Um, I get the blood work done. I get the ultrasound done. Ultrasound shows my kidneys are clear. Blood work uh, shows that my liver levels are higher than the levels of somebody who is currently experiencing liver failure. Your Billy Rubens? Like, I was in the, like, I think it's, what is it, LTC or something like that? Yeah. Um or LCT or LST, whatever, whatever the fucking, whatever the L thing is that's in your blood work. It was like in the five hundreds. It's supposed to be in like the tens. So you're, they were saying, I'm hearing you're superior. You have more of the thing. Yes. But usually that means that you have liver failure or something or like psoriasis or like a chronic liver disease of some kind. Yeah. The good Um, ones. So I wake up, I wake up at 9 a.m. on Friday and I have a, I have a phone call from, uh, from my doctor's office and they're like, yeah, um, your liver levels were pretty high. You need to go to the ER. And I'm like, okay. So I roll out of bed. I take my shower. Cause like, keep in mind, I'm just tired. Right. Yeah. I'm not like I don't have fevers. I'm not coughing. I'm not sneezing. I'm just fucking tired. Mm-hmm. So I go to the ER and I'm like, okay, this is going to be quick because like what they wanted to do was a CAT scan and blood work. Right. Um, the CAT scan was there because they wanted to check my liver, obviously, um, because like something might have been wrong with my liver, like very wrong. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the blood work was, of course, just to reinforce certain things, maybe test for certain whatever. And the only reason I'm going to the, the ER is because the amount of time it would take to, like, get a CAT scan scheduled, I could have been dead by the time <laughs> that was done. You have so, those get scheduled out a few weeks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, uh, I go to the ER. I check in. There's, like, a fuck ton of people in there. All right. I'm like... Why the fuck? It's it's a Friday morning. Why the fuck is there like 30 people in the ER waiting room? Right. Because like it's a Friday morning. Right. Mm-hmm. And like in the past, I've been to ERs and like at night, it's usually more. But like if I walk into an e- if I've ever walked into an ER in the morning, it's usually been pretty light. Right. Because usually everyone's in a room or what have you. And like the people who need to be where they are are where they are. So I'm like, this is fucking weird, but whatever. So I sign up, and then I just start noticing that people go into the triage room and leave the triage room, and then go into the triage room and leave the triage room, and then go into the triage room and leave the triage room. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Because usually you go to triage once, and then your process as like you know your triage like says right yeah you're in there because because that's like that's like how emergency rooms work you you assign people who are more in more danger to be seen sooner people in less danger seen later right um personally i have no problems i'm not like complaining or anything at this point there's nothing wrong because it's like yeah i get it like i mean i seem like i'm fine externally whatever Um, So they take blood work, take vitals, yada, yada, yada. Um, And um, they don't COVID test me for a whopping, like, three hours into this. (laughs) And 
I want to point this out. This is very important. Because that means that they weren't COVID testing Any of all them. of those people. So there's a fuck ton of people in this waiting room who were just there. <laughs> You who know, haven't the, been COVID tested. The famously spacious in, emergency waiting room. Yes. And we're, we're, keep in mind, we're in fucking New York where the new Omicron vari- subvariant has just recently started becoming more common. It's having a party. Like, so I'm just, and like, it's in like, uh, whatchamacallit, like Western New York, mid- Central New York areas like that, which for those of you who don't know, we're not quite Central New York, but a lot of people in our area go to Central New York pretty fucking regularly. There's oh, it, it's it's here. There, there's a couple people where I work. Yeah. They, they had they had it. Uh, it yeah, everyone was required to be vaccinated. They they got breakthroughs with it. Uh, yeah. Oh no, no, I know. Yeah. I, oh, oh, I know, I know. So I end up getting uh, I end up getting my CAT scan at like one o'clock. And keep in mind, I got I walked into the building at nine thirty, right? So I get my CAT scan. I get my ultrasound, whatever. Uh, contrast fluid's weird. It makes your body burn. It's very strange. Oh, iodine. Yeah, the iodine makes your yeah. body burn. It's pretty wild. Um, <laughs> it's, you're like, why is my blood hot? <laughs> well, the weirdest thing is like how quickly it spreads through your body. Yeah. Like, it kind of makes you realize how fast blood is moving through your body, and you're just kind of like, huh. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I got that done, and I'm like, okay, good. So like... Now I'm basically good, right? Because, like, the whole reason I came here was for blood work and for uh, an ultrasound, right? Or not an ultrasound, a CAT scan. So, like, clearly they're going to be done soon, right? Yeah. Because, you know. The things are done. All all the, the diagnostic tests that I needed were done. So, like. You checked your, your, your quest list. All the boxes yeah. are ticked. You're yeah. good to go. And so. Not only that, but the the hospital has like a health portal, right? Yeah. And I was looking at the health portal, and the radiologist already like responded to things, and they're like, um, "Gallbladder has gallstones. It's enlarged. Looks like it's like whatever, like color, whatever, blah blah blah." So basically, the the thing was the the radiologist said like, "Hey, it looks like this dude's just got like." Gall, gallstones that are causing dial backup, a bile backup, which is causing his liver to be weird. Um, which is like, okay, fine. I thought that was it, right? And I was like, okay, I can just go then, because like, you know, my oh, my liver. You're not good to go in... until the lady asks you to sign a receipt. No, I know. So I'm like, okay, like it's pretty clear. Also, my spleen was enlarged. Um, Hot. Which was weird. Yeah. So I can I proceed to then sit there for another seven hours until I'm eventually let into a waiting room, in, into <laughs> like a, a a room to be seen, and you know I'm sitting there and then they fucking move me from one room to another. But what they do is they move the bed, right? Yeah. And when they move the bed, I'm like I can walk. Like you don't oh. need to push me in the bed, the, and I ha- felt they, they, it's they have to make you do it in the bed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is weird. So then they park me in in a room that's like directly across from a nurses station, and I just yeah. see a bunch of nurses just like fucking chilling there, and I'm like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> and I got like, I got like kind of mad because you know, I've been sitting there for. 10 hours and like I just want to leave yeah because like I usually pick up Christina on Fridays so like I'm like it's already past the time that I would normally pick her up yeah at this point you're like I'm so late I just want to leave I want to leave I want to get I want to get my girlfriend and I want to just like sleep yeah right like I want to take a shower get all this bullshit off of me and then go to sleep yeah so you, attending, you don't want to Netflix and chill. You want a Hulu and panic nap. <laughs> pretty much. That's that's my life. Yeah. Um. So I eventually a fucking attending shows up, right? Yeah. And he like palpates, does all the shit, right? And then he's like, "All right, get in a, uh, 
get in a gown so I can check your um your 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 lymph nodes, right? And I'm like, okay. And he's like, I'll be right back. And I'm like, all right, fine. So 30 minutes later, a nurse walks in <laughs> and does my intake questions. Oh, good. <laughs> 11 hours deep into the whole thing. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, this is about right, right? Like, this is what I expected. Um, dude comes back. He checks the, he checks my, my lymph nodes. And then, like, I don't know why he made me wear the gown because he's like, all right, let me, let me see, let me see the, 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 the bits. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't care that you see my bits, but like, why didn't you just look at my bits when you were here the first yeah. time? Cause yeah. like, I could have literally just pulled down my pants just a little bit. It would have taken yeah. me of all three seconds. This. So like, I don't, and like, here's the thing. I don't give a shit if, if a doctor or a nurse sees any of my bits. You know how many bits they see in a day? More bits than most people see in a lifetime. Yeah. So, like, I don't give a shit, right? Because it's yeah. like, you're going to forget about my bits in, like, literally five oh, minutes. So, I don't give a shit. You might have looked shit. like the kind of person who he's like, okay, I have to go prepare myself. And he just has to go into a different room and will take deep breaths and just look at, like, body horror for a while. Before he can get himself to go back into your room, because he's like, I can just tell it's gonna be something. <laughs> like, uh, like, like the uh, thing that's been showing up in our uh, Discord server. I don't care if there's teeth. He needs to get him spot to that level. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Uh, he comes back and he's like, well, it could be hepatitis or it could be mono. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, we're going to order some more tests with the blood that you gave us 10 hours ago. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And he's like, but we're not going to be done with this before you leave. And I'm like, okay. So can I go now? Right? Like, mm -hmm. at this point, I'm just like, I just want to fucking leave. Right? Yeah. And I've, I'm like, because I had to get the contrast fluid. I've I've had a fucking... IV in my arm for like seven hours. Yeah. And I'm just like, I want to go. Um, so I leave and then I get home. I check it because like, I'm worried that it's hepatitis or something. And like, yeah. if it's hepatitis, then that affects things like that, that then I have to be like, co like cognizant of that when like, you know, interacting with my girlfriend and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, you know, so I'm like, okay, let me make... And then I'm like, it's fucking mono. <laughs> and I'm just like... So I just wasted like 12 hours because I was a fucking nerd in high school and college. Yeah. <laughs> that was basically <laughs> it, right? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The, the, I think my first text when he's... You told me what happened. And I think the first thing I replied was just, who gets mono at 30? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, that's a good point because I looked it up, and it's like a ninety-five percent like people have have had mono, yeah, in their like early thirties. So like, I'm a fu I was a fucking like rounding error. Yeah. <laughs> um. Um, but there was also another thing uh, that I want to talk about for just a split second. We yeah. got to get into the episode. I'm sorry, people, but this this was something to behold. So at about like hour seven, a dude walks in, and um, he's walking in with his wife. Mm -hmm. Um, they're a mixed race couple. The dude's white. Uh, the wife is black. You know, whatever. I they say hello. We're the Stamoses. <laughs> um. Dude looks like his head kind of looks like a penis. He's got one of those heads, you know the ones. You know he's ones bald. About. Yeah. Oh, I know what but you're talking like, about. The back but of like the head. aggressively, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, he walks in and he's talking about like, you don't have to wear a mask at Walmart, but you got to wear a mask in the emergency room. What's the oh. point in that? <laughs> and I'm like, hey, oh no. <laughs> I, I'm like, are are you a moron? Because like. There are sick people here. Yeah. Like, 
that's the reason why you have to wear a mask. Yeah. Like, if anything, if it was the opposite, I'd be more concerned and I'd be I'd say I'd say that. Yeah. But but like you're you're doing it the wrong way. Like yeah. the joke is the wrong way. You realize this, right? <laughs> um So then I'm just standing there, he's just bitching about everything. He has a broken finger, right? So yeah. for those of you who don't know and haven't broken like a bone or a finger or anything like that, they pretty much just tie a splint to your finger to tie it to another finger. Yeah. Because that's all they can fucking do. Yeah. You just have, the only thing you do for that is you immobilize it as best you can. You don't put it in a fucking cast. You put it in a fucking splint. And yeah. that's it. So, like, <laughs> dude doesn't even actually need to be in an emergency. No, you go to CVS and buy a finger splint. Yes. That's yes. what you do with a broken finger. So, so he's fucking, like, livid the whole time being an asshole. Um, security guard comes over and is like, hey, man, uh... You can't have any guests in here, right? Because that's policy. Right? Yeah. And um, he's like, your your wife's going to have to leave, right? And then dude freaks out, right? Because of course he does. And he's like, well, what about all the other, other couples that are here? And I look around the room. <laughs> and there's two couples where one person is like f- basically an in- invalid, right? Yeah. Like functionally an invalid. There's a woman who clearly has cancer and her husband's there. And then there's a child with a parent and like either a parent's, the parent's friend, a, sis, a sibling or something like that. And I'm just like, are, are you, are you, what? Why are you, you have a broken finger, dude. Yeah. These people need like, like the child, the children need a support structure, yeah. right? Uh, the the fucking it, people who are invalid, they need someone there. Yeah, and that woman has cancer. Like, <laughs> like clearly has cancer. What are you doing, right? Yeah. So he pitches a bitch, you know. And then I'm just sitting there, and he gets on the phone with his wife at a certain point, and he's like, "You know why they're doing this, right? It's racism." <laughs> And I'm just like, <laughs> really? It's, and it's, like, don't get me wrong. Like, racism is a problem. It exists. Yeah. It exists. For for multiracial custer, cu- yeah. uh, uh, Actually, couples, it exists. More so in uh, the medical field. Like, the entire um, o- OBG uh, Wanfield wouldn't exist if it was done against unconsenting you know like that's it's built upon that as its structure yes, yes. like it's it's so, inseparable from the healthcare yes. field so so it's it's like yeah okay that's fine um in this particular case no dude no no like like yeah you're the only mixed race couple here but like also you're the only person who just has a fucking broken finger you fucking idiot yeah. So I'm just like I like I like turn around at this point. I'm like, really? <laughs> and he didn't hear me, yeah. right? And then he complains to a nurse, and the nurse is he's like complaining to the nurse, and he's like, "Who decided that my wife couldn't be in here with me? Who who decided?" And, and the nurse is like, "It's it's hospital policy." And he's like, "Well, what about all these other people?" And she's like, "It's extenuating circumstances." Well, who decided that? It's just extenuating the circumstances. Did the rent a cop decide it? And he's like being a complete piece of shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm like, I turn around. I'm like, dude, this is stressful enough. I'm at hour seven or eight at yeah. this point. So like, I'm done. And I'm just like, fuck you, dude. And like, at this point, my that dude took my mood yeah. and dropped it to like a zero for the rest of the day. Yeah. So... Yeah, so that's the story of how I found out I had uh, <laughs> mono. I had 30. mono. Yeah, so I'm going to be super short with this. So a couple points. My wife and I were at the ER, a different one, uh, yesterday. The, uh, the number of people I saw walk into the back to sit in a wheelchair, I found hilarious. Because they do have to. Like, it's required. Like, you, they have to. You have to be yeah. pushed around in a wheelchair. But you, the people, number of people I saw just walk to it, fucking hilarious. <laughs> the other part. Um, 
So, oh, sorry, our our daughter was sick. She's fine. She doesn't have any. Uh, she got swabs and all that. She's good. Um, she doesn't have mono. No, she doesn't you have check mono. For that. Yeah, but my wife and I. So we're a big race couple, and we're in the back there. And then the um, one of the administrators comes out, and uh, there were seats when we showed up, and it started filling up when we got admitted. And he basically just like went around, and the their policy was like anyone that's not accompanying a minor has to get out. So they like they they like had a list of like patients who were like oh, this is no. No, nothing bad happened. I'm just saying that's a okay, thing okay. in every hospital. Like, they had a list of, like, this person's waiting to be admitted. This is their spouse. Get their spouse. Like, they were just kicking everyone out because they needed mm-hmm. room. Like, that's yeah. just a thing. And then, like, we were allowed to yeah. stay because we were accompanying a minor. And there's only yes. one other couple that was allowed to stay because they were accompanying their, um, yes. they had a nonverbal child. Who, who it is, it out. is literally the most normal thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, all right, we're running out of room. Anybody who doesn't need, who isn't a minor and isn't being treated, has to get out. Like, I mean, that's that was even a thing before COVID. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, like, that guy's just a pansy. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so sorry for giving you um that dude that one that one Bigfoot dude from uh uh <clears throat> from Podbean is gonna be real pissed at us for this episode. Oh yeah, um, that one guy. That one guy who complained about it. It's like, I'm never going to forget that. It's like, if you don't want to listen to us talk about our lives, you're listening to the wrong podcast. Yeah. Plus, we get we get it all out in the first part. Just skip. Just skip. Yeah. We we, we do. We try, at least. Yeah. Anywho. Uh, so this is this is Cryptopedia. I'm, uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. I'm not even going to bother saying all the things because we're so fucking ridiculously behind right now. Um... <laughs> And that's my fault. Well, actually, that's Mono's fault. That is Mono's fault. Because here's the thing. If I didn't get Mono, we would have been into this instantly. But you know what? Fucking Mono. <laughs> Anywho. So, um, I wanted to kind of continue back on the uh, the trend that I was doing where I was, like, talking about, you know, internet, like, stuff and you know ghosts and shit like that because like i like it i like urban legends i like all that stuff i mean that's why we do this podcast kind of because you know we we Um, find it interesting and the immediate population of people to talk to it would be more like we'd be subjecting them to mm -hmm. our yeah i i absolutely subject subject my girlfriend to this so oh yeah mm -hmm. so (laughs) she doesn't even like horror at all (laughs) I don't make her watch horror movies. I'm not a monster. There's, I still try to just slip eel facts in conversation with Erica on occasion. Fucking eels. Um. So I finally wanted to talk about haunted dolls on this podcast because nice. Uh, we talked about a haunted box, so I wanted to go Hot. into a haunted doll. Um, and I was I was originally planning on like looking up some haunted dolls on eBay for this. You know what? What? <laughs> we ordered some stuff off Goop. And then we tried it, and you know what? Now we've got a haunted box. <laughs> <laughs> Side effect. But um, bum. Um, haunted yoni so, stone. Haunted yoni stones. Yeah, I mean those jade stones are haunted. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna cause you to have like bacterial infections. Yeah. Yeah, because jade is porous. Don't 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 stick jade in your body, people. It. Don't just, stick anything that's not intended to be stuck into your body into your body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, technically, they intend you to put that in your body, but, like, it's jade, and, like, you're <laughs> just going to give yourself toxic shock. Yeah. Anywho. Um, so, for whatever reason, dolls have really become a staple of paranormal lore, right? There's, like, this... It's like, so I have a hypothesis and a th- like theory about this. It's because it's like, you've got the innocence of childhood, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's like, the like uncanny valley fright of the, the unknown that these yeah. like, kind of stories embody. And like, that makes it way scarier, right? Because like, a doll is a child's plaything, right? There's no yeah. intrinsic meaning, but like, whatever the child imposes on it, um, there is a meaning then. Right, so yeah. we already are very predisposed to putting like stories onto dolls, right? And like we're yeah. trained as children, not even trained, 
it's just nat- part of human nature to like say, oh, this doll's name is Susan and she's a bitch. There's, it comes on most of their tags now. If you buy any doll mm-hmm. from any store, read the tag. It's mm-hmm. got, like, here's the doll's name, got... here's their background, mm-hmm. and and here's the life of a very sad person who thought they were going to be a professional screenwriter. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but still, like, honestly, I think haunted dolls are, like, on that list of, like, things that freak people out the most. Like, I mean, you walk yeah. into a porcelain doll room. Like, most people are going to be like, this is fucking creepy, dude. Right? Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I, I I, don't know of anyone who wouldn't be like, this is weird. And I say that being surrounded by Transformers. So, like, everything that I'm going to say in this episode is with a with a scoop of irony. Okay? Yeah. So, like, like, I'm fully aware of some of the irony of the things I'm about to say. Oh, so I was at work. This is, and then I'll let you get right back to it. Yeah, and I was thinking about that Alanis Morissette song, and then my jaw dropped because that Alanis Morissette song about where she's like, "Isn't it ironic?" and nothing in the song's ironic. The irony That's is it. that the song itself is called irony, and it's not ironic at all. That's where yes. it lives. Yes. Like I was just like, it hit me when I was at my desk. I forget what I was what what I was doing, but I was like, "Oh my god, I've I found it." Didn't that come out in the night? That came out in the nineties, right? Uh, nineties uh, or early two thousands, I guess. Yeah, welcome, welcome to that time period, Brad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hate it when I have those moments. There was another. Yeah. There was a song that I recently was like, "Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I can't remember what it was because, like, that's happened to me so many times. Where yeah. I'm just like, oh, that was the point." <laughs> okay but anywho so like because there's these nebula- nebulous reason it like things we can assign things to dolls really easily um and like also there's like this like emotional link that we have to dolls and action figures and toys and you know all yeah. all instruments of play there's like there's a there's an emotional link there, and like as humans, we're like predisposed to, you know, be into emotion because it's what's kept us alive as yeah a species. Um, <laughs> so, but like if you think of an Brandon, when you think of a haunted doll, what is the first thing that like pops into your head? Um, honestly, the one that is the topic of today's episode. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's the first one. That's I, the first I always, one. I always think of a Raggedy Ann doll. Not really. Uh, I I'm always thinking of a porcelain doll. Uh, Mainly because I hate porcelain dolls. I think they're, they're the creepiest fucking they're thing. They're terrifying. Ever. I inherited a lot of um, Hummels, and the first oh, that's thing also I did terrifying. was get them the fuck out of my house. <laughs> they're cursed. <laughs> they're all cursed. Mm-hmm. I I was given a Hummel, and I think it lives in my attic. Yeah. Oh. With all the other haunted stuff. And D- Danny DeVito, of course. Of um, course. So, but, like, effectively what ends up happening is you have, like, the sense of other, right, from these dolls. Yeah. But at the same time, they're not. It's confusing. Um, But we then, like, kind of carry all of these memories into the future. And then we have stuff like Chucky, Annabelle, yep. Slappy from Goosebumps. And Billy from Saul and like all the other ones that have entered the public consciousness. Um, and is Billy dolls, the Saw doll? That's the name of the Saw doll. I was looking it up. Did they, they ever say that name. in any of the movies? Apparently? Question mark. Its name is Billy. That's or is that the only? My guess is that's one of the characters whose names you only know if you read the credits. Probably. Probably. But yeah, apparently it's called Billy. Huh. Okay. So yeah. Um. So this week I want to cover one of the more important real life in quotes haunted dolls, Robert, <laughs> and um, it's contributed to the lore of like a litany of other entities. Um, I should say it is not the inspiration for Chucky. That is a common myth about Robert the doll. He is not the inspiration for Chucky. Um, but 
Um, I'm going to be using a combination of sources uh, with Robert the Doll by David L. Sloan as the main source of information this week. I also found a podcast on uh, uh, Monster Hunt, Monster Quest, Monster Hunt. What's the name of the podcast? Uh, mon- uh, Monster Talk? Yeah, Monster Talk. That's it. Yes. Thanks. Um, yeah, Monster Talk, uh, where they interview uh, one of the people who worked directly with Robert in a preserv- preservation context. So um, if you want more information on that, take a listen to that podcast, because it's going to go into stuff that we don't go into, and that we're mm-hmm. going to go into stuff that they don't go into. Um, so Robert the Doll is from Key West, Florida. Well, not actually, but we'll get into that. And um, he's kind of famous in the way that the Dover Demon or Flatwoods Monster is famous, I'd say. Like, if you're interested in the paranormal, you've probably seen his picture, right? Yeah. Um, yep. I don't know if everyone's seen... Like, I showed a picture to my my girlfriend, and she's not into the paranormal, and she didn't recognize it. Um, yeah. So... It's not, like, public... It's not, like, Bigfoot levels of fame or Nessie levels of fame. But, like, it's Dover Demon or Flatwoods. Yeah, fair. Totally yeah. fair. Um, What you don't see usually, though, is because, like, a lot of the times it's just a picture of Robert the Doll, right? Yeah. Um, And usually they don't have context for how fucking big this thing is. <laughs> it is 40 inches tall and weighs yeah. six fucking pounds. Yeah. Brandon. My Fortress Maximus behind me. That is more than twice the height of that Fortress Maximus right there. I love that's your uh, your unit of measure for, for certain that's things. My tall, that's, well, that's my fucking tall Transformer I own. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's funny. But, and not only that, but uh, Robert outsizes those, like, life-size do- Barbie dolls, um, which, yeah. on their own, I have a lot of things to say about. Because those are pure nightmare fuel. You know the oh, ones yeah. I'm talking about, right? Oh, like the, I know the, the, explicitly like, the ones you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. No, they almost, almost always ended up they they always end up naked. They they always end up naked and covered in marker. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. Like, I don't know what it is with Barbie dolls, but like for children who use who play with them. They always end up naked. All the time. <clears throat> if the clothes come off, they're going to come off. I mean, that's I, really, that's the rule for life, isn't it? I really, yeah, it really is. I, I don't think I've ever seen a child who has Barbie dolls with all of their clothes intact. <laughs> and like one knee bent the wrong fucking way. <laughs> and somehow pretty... there's a lazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> they go through a lot, okay? Yeah. Um. So the original owner of the doll was one Robert Eugene Otto, or Gene as he liked to be called, mm-hmm. who was born on October 25th, 1900. Now, Brandon, you might you might take a moment there and be like, Robert? Robert's the name of the person who owned it? And the yeah. answer is, yes, of course it is. <laughs> um, it's named after and, the owner. Yeah, so it was, it, he, when he was born, Key West was still an island, Right, because it didn't have the bridges and all that shit. Yeah. Um. So his family was pretty f- well well off. Uh, his father owned two pharmacies in the area, Ooh, and his fa- grandfather was also similarly in the medical profession. In 1904, so when Gene was four years old, uh, he was gifted a mass this massive doll by his grandfather. The doll itself was handmade in 1904 by the Steiff Company in Germany, and we know this for a fact. Um, because of the researchers who work directly with um, Robert the doll, they've they've like followed leads. They found out that it's a Steiff factory doll, you know, whatever. Um, and this is like totally undisputed. There are literally records of the doll's creation, um, and oh, they've been cool. verified by the yeah. So yeah. like we know exactly where this doll comes from, which is important because there's a lot of r- rumors about how the doll like came into existence. Yeah. And a lot of them are bullshit and kind of racist because of course. <laughs> because of course. Um, so despite a clear paper trail to Robert's origin, legends abound, as I said before. Some claim he was gifted to Gene by a loving in-home servant, while others believe it to be a vengeful grift from an angry servant who cursed it with voodoo. So there's okay. the racism a little bit. You know, second page, not, 
not a record by any means, um, which is no. horrifying to me. <laughs> I just want to point that out. Like, I thought about it, and I'm like, I've def- we've definitely hit racism way sooner in an episode. And, like, this is, like, the fourth paragraph. This, yeah, oh, we can- <laughs> let's hit it on the intro next time. I will probably do it. Don't worry. We get, we'll get it. We'll hit it. I mean, you dig little, you just scratch the surface and there's probably some racism. Yeah. Um, but both of them are patently untrue and unbelievable. Right. Um, because Robert's 40 inches tall. Yeah. Just shy of three and a half feet. What 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 servant is going to be able to afford a doll that fucking huge? You know that's va- I didn't think about that. That's very true. <laughs> like like a servant in 1904, right? Yeah. Like, they're not making it. First of all, they're not going to make a doll that that's that is that big. If they're going to make a kid a doll. It's going to be way fucking smaller. You know what? Maybe that servant is so good at carnival games. It's ridiculous. Like that's their grift. But even then, like, a carnival game is not going to give out a 40, like, a fucking handmade 40-inch doll. Nah, that's yeah. not going to fucking oh, happen. Also, they, you can read the boxes in the back of the booth, and you can just order, like, a pallet of the carnival toys for, like, less than the cost of actually winning them. Yeah. Those big ones are, like, two fifty a piece. <laughs> like, they're, they're so cheap. Well, because they're pieces of shit. Yeah. If you've ever won one and you've held it, it's like oh, so bad. This is foam core. Yeah. Practically. Like this is just foam. Yeah. Somebody like had a mold where they cut the foam and then they 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 put like fabric over it and that's like, it. It's probably the foam that like at the end of the day at a mattress factory, all the the trimmings on the floor, they get a push broom and just stuff into the bear shapes. Honestly, that's probably better than a lot of them. That's giving that credit cuz like that would at least be somewhat fluffy. Yeah. Like yeah. I had a I had a husky that was like it crunched every time I touched it. They're made from the empty cocaine bags at the My Pillow factory. <laughs> that that's more believable. Yeah. Um but to get a sense of doll technology at the time because, you know, I'm a, I, I collect toys, so toy technology is important to me. Yeah. Um, the teddy bear was, like, basically a new creation at this time. Ironically, also released by the Stife Company in 1902. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. So the nearly three-foot, six-pound handmade doll would absolutely out, have outstripped the budgets of, like, anybody but, like, wealthy grandparents. Yeah. Pretty much. Right? Someone owns a monocle. That, not only that, it's coming from Germany. Oh right? yeah. So like, um, and I don't know if I talk about this later, but it it was basically a a display model for like a store to advertise the smaller versions of those. Oh, models. okay. Yeah. So like, they would have like a window display with the larger dolls, and you yeah. could then go in and buy the smaller ones. Interesting. Um, yeah. So honestly, because of its because of the fact it's so old, it's basically the stereotype for the beginnings of a doll story. Yeah. Right? Um, Robert himself was further described as having been stuffed with straw, covered in felt, and dressed in a sailor suit. Um, interestingly, the second point, entirely incorrect. Um, Robert was stuffed instead with a material known as wood wool or excelsior stuffing. Excelsior. Which, is a more, which I, I literally never knew this. But it's like water resistant as opposed to straw, which is hay based. And if you've ever been near straw, you know that fucking shit is not water resistant. Oh yeah. And if you you've been on sneezy. a farm if you've been on a farm for like literally five minutes, you'll know that straw is not water resistant. It, if anything, it is water absorbent. Hydroscopic even. Yes. Um so, additionally, Robert's iconic sailor suit was something that Gene gave him later in life. Um, Weird. And the orig- Yeah, so his original outfit was actually, like, a carnival circus-themed thing, like, Jester Har- Harlequin style. So, like, yeah. he had, like, colorful clothes originally, which, honestly, 
I wouldn't take him as seriously as a freaky thing if he did if he had uh like jester clothes. Or maybe I would. I'm not sure. Did he buy like a one two children's ways. outfit and put it on Robert? Like it's that's actually weird. That's kind of weird. weird. It's weirder than that. Oh we'll get to no! It, but okay. it's it's actually weirder than that. Like Robert the doll is a weird fucking story about a weird man. <laughs> and that's really all I have to say right now. Like Gene, who's the person who owned the doll. Yeah. I do not like him as a person at all. Like if I met him in real life, he's dead now. So like whatever. Um is he if I ever met him Albert Ostman? Yeah, actually. Oh. Like Albert Osman was just a dude who went on hikes and like he made up a story about Bigfoots. He wasn't like that weird. Yeah. Like he was an outdoorsy type. He wasn't like he was weird to he was like uh, something we couldn't ex- understand. Yeah. But like Gene is weird in a way that's like directly harmful to other people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so these are like literally all of the known, these are the facts, right? Everything that I just said is things that we know about the doll, but there are additional legends about the doll's provenance. So, um, in the, if the legends to be believed, Gene and Robert were constant companions, inseparable from one another. Weird. Supposedly, yes, but well, I mean, he's a kid, right? Oh, and, like, true. Like as a kid, that's fine. Um, and like... Uh, also keep in mind at this point, dolls. Oh, they're new. not like they're newer. Well, well, they're not new, but like they're not gendered yet because like yeah. marketing hasn't come into play yet, like advertising campaigns and shit. So like having a doll is not like it's not unusual for a boy child to have a doll, right? Yeah. Not that it's unusual now. It's just there's like additional. Social well, didn't back then weren't it. weren't the um. The clo- child clothing wasn't really gendered. Like, like, no, uh, it wasn't. Like Pink boys was would wear dresses. Normal. Like, that was yeah. just a thing. Yeah. It, the, the, basically, uh, capitalism hadn't kicked in full effect yet. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it was there, but like, it wasn't like in uh, world ending overdrive yet. Yeah. Like it is now. Um, so, supposedly, if the legends to be believed, Gene's parent would he- parents would hear. Two voices from the playroom, only to find Robert and Jean sitting in the room playing. Most iconically, people would say that when scolded for something, Jean would utter the common refrain, I didn't do it, Robert did it. Um, To the point that some people even believe that in blaming Robert so much, Jean manifested the supernatural occurrences that would occur in the future somehow. He summoned a demon by diverting uh, blame. More like he shat, he he like blamed the doll so much the doll got pissed basically. <laughs> um, so Gene goes to school September of 1921 uh, at the University of Virginia for two and a half years, then the Academy of Fine Arts in Chicago for three, followed by another two and a half year stint at the Art Students League of New York, and then he finally makes his way to Paris where he meets his future wife Annette Parker. So he he goes around. He's an artist, right? Yeah. Um, and here's a picture of Gene Otto uh, for the people who are um, a hodag or higher, right? Yeah. Cool stance, um, bro. Yeah, and that's one of his paintings, which um, I talk about this more later. I am not a fan of his art style. Uh, it's passionless. It's, it's soulless. It's still life. It, it's... But it's like, there's like no soul to it. Like there's yeah. nothing. It tells me nothing about him. Uh, other than the fact that he's like milk toast, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's like all. Like it's not even like like if you look at the actual picture, like actual painting, like the brush stroke isn't even that like interesting. Like, if it's, he was Andy Warhol, it would just be a jar of mayo. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> at least the tomato pa- so, uh, the tomato soup has umami. Yeah. <laughs> um. So in general, Gene was fairly successful. Um, with his art style, with like his art was successful, 
right? Like, it was a commercial success. You um, know, the, the most commercially successful um, musicians and artists who you've never heard of are the ones who, like, painted the paintings that made it into the design catalog of, like, the Hampton Inn, where it's going to be in, you know, thousands of rooms just because they're buying in bulk. And the same goes for, like, hold music. If you want to be fucking rich, get into, like, hold music. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. break into that market. Because <laughs> well, yeah, if you cause... can get it, like, into a big company's catalog of things that are approved, you're just yeah. going to be everywhere. Well, that well, that's the thing, right? So, yeah. like, um, he's... Milk toast. He's uninspired, right? He's just kind of like his work is in so many dentist offices. But it's kind of like that a little bit, yeah, right. Like it's not that, it's not that interesting, right? Like, not well. Okay, I'm not knocking doing uninteresting work, right? Yeah, because you got to pay the bills, right? The problem is Otto's personality, and we'll get into it in a second. But he acted like he was the greatest artist ever. And oh, that's the problem. I've worked with those guys who, like, they're, they do their job okay, but then mm -hmm. they think they're, like, the dog's balls. Like, they think they're yeah. the shit. Oh, the, I work with a few of those. The problem is, like, he's acting like he's Picasso or, like, somebody who's, like, actually doing, like, like, really meaningful artwork or, like, artwork that, like, says something. But, like, when I look at his artwork, it doesn't say anything to me, right? No. It doesn't speak to me in any way. So, he was generally, however, regarded as an eccentric. His paintings look like he painted them while eating plain toast. Yes. With, like, but, like, like, barely toasted, too. Yeah. Like he just put some Wonder Bread in in the toaster for like three seconds and popped it out. He's like, "Well, that's that's too much toast." Yeah. Like he just needs it to go stale faster. Yeah. Um. So this this eccentricity was highlighted by his return to Key West in 1945 when Jean's mother Minnie Otto was ill. After his mother's death that September, Jean resumed playing with Otto. Keep in mind, Jean is 45 years old. I can't really talk shit, huh. but, but like, he's also playing with, like, a life-size doll, right? Yeah, but there's a difference, like, yeah. if I start a conversation with you, I know there's going to be, like, like, we can go into the nitty-gritty nuances and details and, like, of the things that are on the shelf behind you. He's got just the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like, the... Not that you need a whole lot of a thing to for it to not be weird, but it, I doubt that if you asked him about a specific part of what would become Robert the Doll, who he'd be like, oh, he'd be able to spin off into, like, different, like, materials or, like, the way different companies manufacture them, like... So, so, yeah, that and then what I'm about to tell you oh, it's is actually common. a bigger problem. Okay. So, like... I'm not knocking people who have, like, one thing that they really like, but the thing that I'm about to say is the real problem with Gene and Robert. So, Gene made Robert a room in his attic. Okay. And the room had furniture that was scaled to Robert. Okay. And Gene also got fresh clothing for him. That's... um. Ah, it's so weird. And Brandon, not only that, the sailor outfit that he's wearing, it's kind of universally believed that it was it was Gene's outfit when he was a child. Oh, this man, he there's there's something there's something broken inside of this man. Oh, there is. There's... Don't worry. Don't you'll know for a fact how broken this man. This man oh. is uh I was I thought this episode was going to be short because like the actual story like of what Robert the Doll does and what he is is like honestly can be written on a note card. Yeah. Gene makes this story a nightmare. Oh god. Um so the author of the book that I use David Sloan has a quote from a Sun Sentinel article which appears to be from 1985 but I couldn't find the actual article. So I'm not 100% sure that it, yeah. it's completely precisely valid. And, like, anything that comes from this article, I'm not sure of. Because um, 
David Sloan didn't have like a specific reference for it, mm-hmm. right? Like he references that it's the the Sun Sentinel, but he doesn't have like the article, the the, the volume, the publishing run, the day. You know, he doesn't have any of that shit that would make it like easy to verify. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the article also the the article is comp- like has absolute false heads, fa- fa- like falsehoods about yeah. certain deaths relating to legends and things along those lines. So, like, it's it's a completely bullshit article, but like, it's a part of the lore. Um, and it seems a little bit weird. Like, I. I still can't completely dunk on Gene because I do. I am currently in a room that has like <laughs> seven hundred oh. unique action figures. Yeah, I was gonna say throw out a number, and I'm sure it's gonna be close. It, so, like, <laughs> I can I can knock on him for all the other stuff, but this is like the one thing where it's kind of the pot calling the kettle black. Um, yeah. Regardless, his wife Anne, who's a pianist, <laughs> but again, I don't think you could like bring up a another doll to him, and he'll be able to say, "Oh, that's just like a color oh, no, variant no. of this," or they're using remolded parts from this other. <laughs> He's obsessed with his doll, like yeah, to an unhealthy degree, which we'll find out. Like, like unhealthier I keep saying, than dressing it in his childhood outfits. Literally every time I say, like, something, it's like, don't worry, Gene's gonna get worse. Oh, Gene. He basically escalates to getting worse until his death. Oh, good. Which is a lot. Like, a lot. So, um, Anne placed her career on the back burner because Gene wanted to go back to his childhood home, right? And, like, <sighs> for those of you who don't know, uh, Key West, not really a great place for a pianist. No. Like, a concert pianist, it's, it's not a good place. Um, yeah, pianos famously love humidity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gene had Robert as a constant companion as a 45-year-old man. Um, who He would have him accompany him when he was painting in the turret room of his home, which is called... The artist house. Ugh. And I'm 95% sure Gene's the one who came up with that. Yeah. Um, so, according to rumor, Robert would move window to window, uh, which was a legend that was propagated by the children of the town, as is tradition, right? We had that with Kuchisaka Ona as well. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I've been hammering this home but I really, 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 really want to point out that Gene Otto, Robert Gene Otto, is an absolutely exhausting human being. <laughs> he seems like it. Oh. Like, I was reading this, and I got tired, and I felt terrible for Anne. Yeah. Um. So, by most accounts, he was an accomplished artist. He was... Fairly renowned in Key West, and his artwork largely appeared to be inspired by the region. So, like, if you're from Key West, you recognize it. If you're from anywhere else, it's kind of like, why are you painting a bunch of white people homes? Yeah. Um. <laughs> why is there a house with a column and a, an iguana? Pretty much. Yeah. Uh. So he was a centerpiece, though, of Key West society, which. I, as I mentioned before, um, I'm pretty sure that's probably like almost as white as you can get without going to Connecticut. There's, you're on an island in Florida. <laughs> like that's, yeah. Yeah. Like, like you're, you're pushing Connecticut levels at that yeah. point. Right. Like it's close. It's close. I don't know which one's worse, but yeah. Um, he was active in the community, and he supported the Key West Women's Club and Garden Clubs. Now, I want to say that supporting these things <sighs> does not make you a... So, supporting a women's club... I feel like it was for not, creepy reasons. It does not make you a feminist. I don't think it was for creepy reasons. I think it was more an ego thing. Because, um, like, I'm not going to lie. 
I don't think Gene Otto really had. There was nothing in his story to suggest that he like was really a sexual being. Um, <laughs> Except for all that, other, come on, that sailor suit. <laughs> yeah, that might be the difference. Um, but like he, we're gonna get into it. So his home was a sort of gallery for his artwork, of course. Um, unsold art was found in the home in addition to expensive furniture and curios that he had gathered from his time in Europe with Jean, with, with Anne. Um, Jean operated under the belief that his home would one day be a museum of his life's work. Oh. Hence the artist house. He's really, really full of himself. And oh, insufferably... Wow. Gene had a standing request of his wife to cast his hands in wax upon his no. death to make the centerpiece of the museum the artist's hands. Gene didn't have any friends who are like brutally honest growing up. No, he didn't have friends, actually, I don't think. Um, Brandon, I wish I had even like a modicum of that level of confidence. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I don't want to be that confident, but, like, I wish I was, like, even remotely close to that confidence. Yeah, like, if fart particles from Gene, like, wafted into your nostrils, like, you would become, like, <laughs> like, like, oh, God, what's it called? A, um, those guys that, like, read books to, like, get girls to, <laughs> to like, a, uh, a pickup oh. artist, like... Like, Gene yeah. was so full of himself that shit particles entering your nostrils would turn you into a pickup artist. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, so, Brandon, want, want to make things even worse? Oh, please so you do. know how I told you how he was, like, the centerpiece of Key West society? Yeah. Um, he'd entertain guests frequently in his home. However, he didn't like alcohol. Now, yeah. you know me. I'm not a big guy on alcohol, right? Yeah, you, I don't make you a deal of it though. You just I don't drink. make a deal. It's like I don't drink, but like if you want to drink, fine. Just you know, yeah. drink in moderation, right? Yeah, like, like we've played plenty of games of like D and D or board games where like it's just a normal game, and like maybe I'd have a beer, maybe someone else would, but like no one's, mm -hmm. and it's not nobody's like making a deal out no of it. No one's, no one like, makes a deal out of it. Because we're not like it's just hey, a John here, why don't you? And you're not like hey guys, like <laughs> it's just like a thing. It's just people coexisting, yeah. having fun. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I don't make a deal of it. Gene, he made a fucking deal of it. Oh. Right? So, like, he banned hard liquor from parties in his home, um, and he policed his wife co wife's consumption of alcohol. Like, uh, apparently he let wine go at the parties, but, like, that was yeah. it. Nothing harder than wine. Is that, does which, that like, stem from, like, a par childhood thing with, like, his parents? I don't know. I think he was just an asshole. I mean, I can buy it. <laughs> like, like I really think he was just an asshole and like full of himself, and like he didn't like alcohol, so like that's not too hard a dot like, to connect. Yeah. Um. But Brandon, and she had a bottle of, and I quote, "special water." Oh, nice. That, that Jean wasn't allowed to touch. That she kept in the house. <laughs> The That's special perfect. water was vodka. That's so perfect. <laughs> and she filled it at her, at her neighbor's home, and she drank while Jean slept. That's um, so good. And for those of you who don't know, secret drinking, hallmark of a healthy relationship. Like <laughs> Absolutely. All of the healthiest relationships have one person drinking alcohol while the other person sleeping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just facts. I mean, that, sometimes that also just means, like, you take turns with baby duty. You're like, all right. That, too. Let's get my glass of wine and, and one episode of uh, uh, Moon Knight in. <laughs> fair, fair. That's a different case. We're talking about two totally different types. Yeah. We're talking about a healthy interaction between spouses and yeah. partners versus a uh, deeply unhealthy and problematic interaction between being spouses. aided by the neighbors <laughs> like, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. even a secret i mean for gene it's a secret but like other people are helping her 
Oh, but wow. I also want to point out. I want to point out. This is how like self interested Gene is, right? <sighs> like he's so self absorbed that he's not like he believes that this is special water, and like doesn't believe that it's fucking vodka. Like that's how that's... like insufferably wow. self absorbed absorbed this man is. He's like, right? of, he's like, of course it's special water. Why would it, I have any reason to believe it's anything different? Yes. So like, and I, I, you know, I don't always like knocking on people that I don't know, right? But like, in Gene's case, I feel like I'm allowed to because this dude is fucking insufferable. Yo, um, he's a lot. So like, and and not only that, but like, what he does when he dies is even worse. He's um, a very appropriate title for that section, by the way, so far, because just Gene Otto, an exhausting man. Like, that. Uh huh. That's honestly the whole episode's oh. name, basically. Because, cause honest, like, Brandon, we've barely talked about Robert the Doll, it's which speaks Gene. to how, how boring Robert the Doll himself is and how awful Gene is. So, um, what I'm basically trying to say is there's some clear problems in this marriage. Yeah. Um, as noted before, Anne had postponed the, her career for the development of genes. Very, very good thing. Very so good, good and healthy. Super healthy. Um, rumors abound of physical abuse by Gene. Um, and in these rumors, it is said that Gene would report the re- repeat the refrain from his childhood, I didn't do it, Robert did. Um, <laughs> physical abuse is unsubstantiated, but he absolutely uh, mentally abused this woman. Like, yeah. Zero. D- and Brandon, we haven't even gotten to it yet. We haven't even gotten to the parts that I'm saying are like clear cases of the mental bad abuse. parts. Yeah. Um, Gene had a bit of an ego. Shocking. I know. Um, and he would force Anne to wait outside of events for five minutes before she could enter so he could be the center of attention. Oh, Because cool. she pulled attention away from him, not even intentionally. Like, she was just doing her thing, right? Additionally, uh, supposedly Anne was a phenomenal pianist, and he forbade her from actually exercising her skills in public because of jealousy over them, Right? Um, like he wouldn't let her play piano at church. She had to. She was not allowed to like be the church pianist. She wasn't allowed to do anything around piano. He because, sounds like a toddler. I mean, he kind of explicitly is a toddler. Um, like there's a whole bunch of like shit we could get into in terms of like how he's like his projections and like the way that he interacts with Robert the doll is kind yeah. of a little like it. It's infantile, right? The way that he does it. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot that could be made about this. Cause, like, there's one thing, like, I don't think that playing with toys is inherently childish. Because no. I think, I think that play is the way that we as a species, uh, learn and process emotions, right? Um, the way that it manifests in every person is very different. Uh, and this is, this is like literally what my, you know, my specialty is. I don't is think like, people ever stop playing with toys. Just the toys change no. into like yes. lawnmowers sometimes or grills or like bicycles mm-hmm. or like whatever yeah. else <laughs> your thing yes. happens to be. Well, well, that's the thing, right? Like play itself is a very nebulous concept because it's, it's yeah. so a lot of the times we define it in like the types of work that I do as like a magic circle, right? Yeah. Um, And the magic circle has a set of rules. And when you're inside that magic circle, those rules rule, rule supreme. They're usually like uh, social rules, uh, moral rules, norms. Like, you know, they, they can buck traditional norms and mores. Like, for example, yeah. if you're playing Secret Hitler, it's okay to lie. It's expected that you lie. Yeah. Right? In real life, you don't because that's a douche thing to do. But in, yeah. like, a hidden information game, that's, a ho- like, the whole point of it. Yeah, but like, I don't think that Gene is in, Gene engaged in play in a healthy way. No, um, does not sound like it. But Brandon, still not 
even the weirdest fucking shit he did. Because he would take pictures of the layout of his home to okay. instruct Anne how things should be. No. Like, a, here's how I want it to look when I come back kind of thing? If anything was out of place, he would basically throw a tantrum. There, this man, he's just a broken man. He's yeah. just a broken man. He was an incredibly self-serving human being. Um, and, and Brandon, it's no surprise, he and Anne, they slept in different rooms. Of, and yeah, of course. I, I really, like, if Anne ever once orgasmed in that relationship as a result of Gene. I'm sure she did I plenty be, of times, but in her other room and not a yes. result of Gene. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the special. the secret that's the water lives. Yes. Where the secret water lives. Um, I don't think Gene was ever responsible for one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so Gene thankfully dies in 1974 of Parkinson's. I don't like being happy that someone dies, but I feel like when Gene died, a blight left the world. At least like his wife was freed from her prison. <laughs> like You'd think. What? So uh, he talked to Robert extensively in his final days, right? And Gene was a hateful bastard. So he wrote Anne out of the will. And Brandon, <laughs> of course he, he wrote Anne out of the will because Anne's mom wrote him out of her will. Okay, weird. It was to spite Anne because her mom spited him. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so allegedly, Anne had to beg to keep his her, the home from Jean's sister with the help of her friend, William Gazer. Because the sister got fucking everything, including a portrait of Anne, which is like she wanted to have so she could give it to her niece. Yeah. Um, That's just a bunch of now, weird... A we now a no one of... fucking knows where that portrait is. It was sold, and no one fucking knows where it went. Oh, it was um, tax evasion. <laughs> yeah. Um... Anne's story then ends even more tragically because she lost nearly all of her possessions, right? Yeah. Um, and she spent the final years of her life in Massachusetts with her sister, eventually dying of pancreatic cancer. Sweet. But, but, she did get the final fuck you. I'll say this. Okay. Um, because I don't think the artist's hands were ever produced. Makes um, sense. And she covered Jean's pl plot in concrete rather than brick. Oh, nice. Which, there you that's go. a pretty good fuck you. Yeah. Um, at this point, legend very clearly diverges from reality. Right? So it alleges that she had a clause in the lease stating Robert must remain the sole occupant of the attic room. Um, seeing as she sold the home to William Geyser, Geyser and gave Robert to him saying... Th that doll was Gene's best friend, of course. He never had any other friends. Um, it'd be pretty hard for her to write that into a lease. She fucking hated that doll. She hated Gene. And she said the thing that we were all suspecting, that Gene didn't have fucking friends. Yeah. Um, Gazer would then leave Robert in the second floor chest for the next occupant, Myrtle Reuter. And at this point, the story continues, and we get into the like actual Robert stuff, right? Yeah. So, just to establish Robert's backstory, he was the doll of a weird, terrible human being. Doll of a weird guy that was originally a display piece yeah, for like a shop. Mm -hmm. So the story becomes confusing at this point, um, because in the legend, Anne is supposedly renting the house out. And during this time, Robert's said to be fairly active, right? Two men renting the house said they heard noises coming from the attic. And upon investigating, they would find Robert in different positions and poses. Which, honestly, <laughs> is fucking hilarious to me. <laughs> I feel like that's funnier than it is horrifying. I think this has to do with, with secret water. And Robert also had a strange appendage strapped to his waist. <laughs> <laughs> 
he got turned into a sex doll. Yeah. Um. Further, a uh, a plumber was said to have heard laughter from the attic, only to find that the doll moved to a new place in the room. There does, however, appear to be at least one story from this, like, cornucopia of things that is not true, but happened, right? Okay. Um, so, Myrtle Ruder, Ruder, Myrtle Reuter <laughs> says that go. a man studying to be a lawyer... Um, who was at hit the home at the time, wrote the following, or he claimed the following, or something along these lines. He wrote this fantastic story that the doll was voodoo and locked him in the attic and he caught yellow fever. As in, the doll gave him yellow fever. Oh. Yeah. I don't no, know. No, it didn't. The man, <laughs> yeah, the man believes this happened to him, but like, Myrtle herself says he was some kind of nut. Yeah, sounds about right. Is, is pretty funny. Um, notably, this is the only story that I can find that has the factual input from the actual owner of the home. And even in that case, she doesn't believe the tale. The fact is, uh, the provenance of Robert was Jean to Anne to Geyser to Myrtle to where it lives now, right? So there's, there's more transitions of this doll. It's been held by five people, right? Yeah. Um, but there's a fuck ton of stories that say that other people have interactions with the doll. Uh, and it largely nullifies most of the stories told between 1974 and 1994 because we know exactly where the doll was and it was in Myrtle's possession. Yeah. Um, in the most easily disproven story, a family with a 10-year-old girl is said to have moved into the home after Anne's death in 1979. Um, and... She moved in, like, I I don't know how to, like, it was confusing, right? Yeah. So, like, I, it didn't make sense. It, there was, it was illogical that this could have happened, right? Okay. Um, <coughs> naturally, the girl played with Robert only to have it supposedly attempt to smother her <laughs> as she woke up. To it attempting to smother her in the night by sitting on her chest or something along those lines. Okay. In response, her father locked the door in a chest, and of course, he was later killed by carbon monoxide poisoning in the car in front of the home. Oh, good. And of course, there's zero evidence that this happened. <laughs> Robert Robert left an empty bottle of Jack Daniels on the passenger seat and ran a hose from the exhaust to the, <laughs> to the window. <laughs> It was Robert's. Robert did this. And then Robert left a note in the, in the written as if from the first person of the driver. Oh, God. Um, In reality, Myrtle had Robert until 1994. For years, she would dress him in pajamas during Christmas to act as a de- decoration. Less creepy. I dig it. Eh, maybe more creepy. I don't know. Uh, in 1980, she sold the home, taking Robert with her. Allegedly, after this move, she began to encounter the supernatural of Robert, culminating her in her donating the doll to Fort, e- Fort East Martello Museum, where he resides to this day. Um, okay. Also, there's some stuff about, like, she died after that or something along those lines. It's, yeah. It's fucking, there's, there's, like, this whole thing like around that, and I just kind of cut it out because it's probably apocrypha and it's probably fake because... A lot of shit about the stories. Maybe. Because internet does its thing. Yeah. Um, so while I've alluded to the supernatural properties of Robert, I haven't directly addressed to them. In short, it's a stereotypical haunted doll. Like, if a, if a haunted doll does it, Robert probably does it too. Um, he's been alleged to move while no one is watching and cause general mischief. In one instance, after being restored, he was said to have uh, left his lock case and dirtied his feet. Um, oh, allegedly, what this a rebel. propensity for mo- yeah, I know. Uh, allegedly, this propensity for motion is what resulted in her donating the doll, an act to impl- implied to have resulted in her death three months after dessert- donating it. I can't speak. Um, and I couldn't confirm that uh, because, of course, no one checked the newspapers from the time, and I don't have access to the newspapers to find her fucking obituary. <sighs> um. For a time, Robert was only visible by appointment only. 
Uh, however, a volume of requests fueled by a local ghost tour uh, interest. Oh, okay. Which, incidentally, I believe was the was the tour that the author David Sloan is responsible for. Oh. Huh. So he he runs a ghost tour, and I think yeah. he's responsible for Robert the Doll leaving. Like you have to see him, whatever. Yeah. Um. As a result, the doll was placed on permanent display. Cool. <laughs> in adding the doll to the permanent display, it resulted in an additional element compounding the legend. Apparently, if you take a picture of Robert the doll without asking for permission or misbehave in his presence, you'll be cursed with bad luck for the, by the doll. Naturally, this has resulted in a tradition of sending apology letters to Robert describing their transac- transgressions that resulted in the bad luck um, and, of course, asking for forgiveness. Great. My favorite of which uh, I found in the main source, and I've I've re- reproduced here. Um, Brandon, you can read it if you want, because it's sure. pretty fucking great. Yeah, so it says, Dear Robert, on August 5th of 2011, me and my wife went to go see you. I was w- warned not to take your picture. I thought it was all mumbo jumbo, so I took your picture without asking permission. The next day, I went snorkeling and got stung three times by Portuguese man of war. There were about 50 of them in the water, and I was the only one who got stung. The next day was my birthday. I had a few drinks. I came several hours later in an emergency room, getting my arms stitched, handcuffed to a hospital bed, where I had been completely blacked out. (laughs) Uh, Apparently, in my blackout, I had wandered away from my hotel over to another hotel and broke a window with my elbow. When the cops showed up, I ran. Uh, It took them quite a while to catch me. When I was finally apprehended, I was apparently speaking in a Caribbean accent. I don't remember any of this. This is all based on what the police report and what I was told by the deputies. Oh, I now have to come back for a court date. I was charged with criminal mischief. I was arrested on my birthday on my honeymoon. Oh, (laughs) On our way back home, our flights were delayed several times. It just felt like you played a huge prank on me for taking your picture without permission. That's a doozy of a letter. Yeah! Yeah, it really is! That, dude just great. got, like... I love the fact that the dude got blackout drunk and blamed a doll. Yeah. The Caribbean accent part is probably the fucking funniest thing. That's a wild like, ride. Oh, that letter's why? a wild ride. How How did that happen? Oh. <laughs> um anywho, so beyond uh facetious allegations of voodoo and the personality of Jean, of Jean being literally so shitty it made a cursed doll. There's yeah. little consensus on the or as to his origin, like for his supernatural properties. Yeah. David Sloan offers three theories, with one of them actually being reasonable. Huh. All right. So first, there's the belief that Robert contains the spirit of the deceased child of the Otto family. That's certainly. what I've heard of, of Robert, is that he's like possessed by the, the spirit of a uh, dead child. Who was the servant of the Otto family. Yeah. yeah. And whether this is by accident or force binding through voodoo, the child's spirit has become bound to the doll. Um, in the second story... Gene projected projected literally so much energy onto the doll that he created a supernatural energy entity. The most likely excuse, um, and one that I firmly ascribe to, is it's people looking for patterns. People hear the doll's curse, oh, yeah. which feeds in them to be afraid of the curse extending to them. Rinse, wash, repeat until you have a self-sustaining ju- juggernaut of confirmation bias. And I actually want to take a second to mention... Uh, I realized after I, I, while I was driving away from the hospital, that this yeah. was the episode that I had planned. Oh! And I was like, it's the curse. If, if I was a superstitious person, it's I'd be like, curse. this is the curse. Except the problem is, I wrote this article while I had mono yeah. because I hadn't encountered anyone since the Sunday before, and I wrote it yeah. on Tuesday. So unless. Robert is a time traveling mono giver, which he may be. Um, he may be. We don't know. Uh, it, it's literally just coincidence. Also, um, if you want to feel even sadder, because this this whole story is just terrible, right? 
George W. Bush sent Robert a 101 birthday wish in 2005. Uh, you know the thing they do for people who actually make it to 100? Yeah. Yeah, I hit here too. And I looked it up. Uh, 44 people died on the day that this this was sent. <laughs> uh, and wars that he started, by the way. Great, great, great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he, he took time out of his day to send a, a letter to... Uh, to a doll that was 101 yeah. years old um, while people were dying in the Middle East, you know, yeah. because direct, like directly, directly because of his actions. Yeah. Directly. Directly. Yeah. Yeah. Also, probably more than that, if you, uh, well, if you extend direct cause to uh, people starving because of sanctions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. No, there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just talking about, like, the noteworthy attacks that I could find from, like, yeah. three seconds of Googling. That's, like, the bare minimum. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that is, I can directly tie those to it. Yeah. So, God. fuck I want to know who wrote that letter to Robert, because I, I need to find this person's, like, I need to know more about this person's daily life. You know that they're a complete and utter piece of, like, trash, right? Like, they're a trash human being. Oh, yeah. I mean, they went to Key West for their honeymoon. That's for sure, but, like, I want to know what episode of Cops I can find this person on. (laughs) I just want to put a face to the name. Oh, they're definitely on Cops. They are probably the whitest trash you've ever seen. Uh... Well... They're either the whitest trash you've ever seen or the whitest douche bro you've ever seen. Yeah, I love the Caribbean accent, the waking up naked, the I went snorkeling and got stung by man of war. There were 50 of them. They <laughs> probably don't go in the water. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like I don't go into into like ocean water if I see a single jellyfish, much less Portuguese man of wars. Yeah. Oh, my favorite can't, colony of things. Can a Portuguese man of war kill you? I think it can hurt. I think it, I don't think so, but I think it sucks a lot. I think like deaths from that were probably from people who were like way out there and you know would have uh, become too tired to make it back to shore. I could be wrong. Uh, it's been a hot minute since I was into the Jap- the um almost a Japanese oh, man of war. It- Portuguese made a war. But they're cool because they're like rarely... a colony of like, they're not a thing. They're a colony of a bunch of things. Well, I think all jellyfish are a colony, aren't they? I don't know. I don't know. I thought know. they were because like, they're not like, now I'm going to look that up. What's the word for the things that are actually a bunch of things? Colony? There's like a specific word for what's it called? Uh, it's a colonial organism made up of zooids. So let's look up colonial. Cinephores. Siphonophores are uh, that. Oh, jellyfish are a single organism. And then, then manowars are, I guess, cinephores. Yeah, I just remember thinking that was, like, sick, totally awesome. They're not a thing. They're a bunch of things, but they look like they're just a single thing. Like a bunch of monkeys holding onto each other's tails. Yeah, or like a rat king. Oh, I got got Magic the Gathering token. The episode's done. (laughs) I love that's um, a thing that we do. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so I got a bunch of Magic the Gathering tokens for my birthday from Christina. And, yeah, I saw um, some of those. Yeah, I got one of them was a uh, pack rats, and it's like a bunch of rats in a in a little like a little trunk. <laughs> I got I had another two, but I'm I'm keeping them under wraps because uh, whenever I play Commander again, I want oh, to play them. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, they're my it, it's for my 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 rat. It's for my Marinar deck that I have. So it's, you've it's, fallen for my trap card. God damn it. I'm it's funny because it's a different card game. 
I'm never going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in person again. No. <laughs> you know what the worst part is? Yu-Gi-Oh! is not a terrible game. But. But. <laughs> but. I've been in I've been in game stores when Yu-Gi-Oh! nights are happening. Yeah, the problem with Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't the game, it's the players. Yeah. Remember that time we went to Dragon's Den uh, years ago and you were like, you walked in and the smell was yes like, yes I do and and then you were like because we were we were talking about playing Malifo and you're like wait we have to come here to play yeah. <laughs> yes yeah because you know what it smelled exactly like is if you remember like the boys locker room but before the gym teacher gives everyone the talk about everyone has to wear deodorant now to be fair that still happens after people. <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's how it smelled. I was like, oh, there's a lot of, lot of fucks. No deodorant. Lots of old shirts. Yeah, pretty pretty fucking much. It's, Is that it's one still great. open, or was that the one where they were like saving everyone's credit card information? <laughs> okay, so there there's a story, actually. <laughs> um, so yes, yes, in fact, they were, they were, uh. Saving people's credit card information, and yes, in fact, they did uh, commit in sh- uh, in like tax, tax fraud. fraud. Yeah. yeah. Um. I think so, two. Of the, I think at two different locations it was tax yes. fraud. Yes. <laughs> yes, they did. Um. So what ended up happening was the dude had to sell the store, uh, because like if he didn't, he'd be super fucked. Um, yeah. So he sold the store. All of the. All of the product as well got sold. Well, actually, no. Okay. So it's more complicated than that. So they closed down due to tax fraud, then sold the store to another person. They moved the store from that location to, I think, like, Walk Hill. So, like, south, yeah. right? Then they moved from that location to... A plaza that's close to where the plaza on the other side of the street from the original place that Dragon Scent was. Yes. Then they closed that location down because the quote unquote the plaza was dead. Yeah. Whatever. Um, and they moved it to fucking Main Street in Poughkeepsie. And I went there once. I did go there once. Yeah. And somebody made fun of uh, my master's degree, and I <laughs> never went again, because <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, so, like, the plaza being dead is a fair excuse if you're, like, a juice shop. The plaza being dead will never be an excuse for a nerd shit store, because if you're a nerd no. shit store, nerds will find a way to your store. <laughs> well, it didn't make it didn't make any fucking sense, because, like, like... There was a there was a fucking Mexican restaurant right next to it. There was yeah. a couple of re- restaurants on the like thing. There was a fucking price chopper. There was Dollar Tree. So like, there's shit that people can go to get like various things and like stay there longer. Yeah. Like, so like, I'm I being located next to a Mexican restaurant during like an F and M. Great. Yeah, I I like, don't great. <laughs> and like, I mean, you'd have to get in your car, but across the the road there's like a fuck ton of restaurants yeah so like you do an order if a bunch of people do an order and then you have one person do like a fucking order run yeah whatever this this is like we're so this is literally the exact hyper local shit that we do yeah so, <laughs> you know um anywho uh if you enjoyed the podcast be sure to go, which Listen, if this is your first podcast episode, I'm so Oof. fucking sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Go listen to like I feel like uh the Albert Osman one was pretty good. If Eels this, one was pretty if good. If this is your first podcast, don't go back to the beginning. Don't start at number one. Oh, don't start <laughs> don't, at number one. Don't no, go no, no, don't, no, no, no. don't go early. Start go like after 30s. the halfway point. Yeah, go like like the middle. I'd say go the, cut it slice into thirds, do the middle. Yeah, yeah, like, do that, like, because we're on episode 111. Yeah. Start at, like, episode 30, because that's when we start to hit our stride. Yeah, oh, there, yeah, yeah, 
Murphy Burroughs Mud Monster, episode 30, up through, uh... Yeah, just, like, start with episode 30, and then if you like it, go Murphy back to the early episodes. I like the divot box. Just go from 30 to 105, and stop there. Perfect range. Murphy's Burroughs Mud, Mud Monster to divot box. Wait, what happened? What about 106, 107, 108, and 109, and 110? They're cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, this is not how we advertise our show. I just thought it would be funny to like chop off all the current ones. <laughs> this is not Brandon, this is not how we sustain <clears throat> interest. We have to talk about this. Like like we got to we got to take this offline, but we need to talk about about how we get people to listen to this fucking terrible show. All right, it's all about SEO and target demographics. I don't even know what I would call our target demographic, to be totally honest. Do they sell ads on... Uh... No, it's a dot org. Where is going. Oh, no, I just had a, like an actual question in my head. Yeah, but like, like sell ads on what? Oh, like, on like Cryptid Wiki or something like that, or like Strange America. Oh, you'd have to just you'd have to like sell it. You you'd you'd have to do it to whatever the ad provider is, and then they would yeah. choose to oh. show the ads. Oh, oh yeah. no, I still I have an ad blocker, and why do I still have ads? Uh, because ad blocker isn't perfect. Oh, yeah. Why am I getting ads um, for like a house from mountain re- mountain retreats near me? Cool. Oh, Brandon, I don't know if I told you about them the first time. I found more fucking Final Faction figures, and I'm very excited. Oh, did you? Yes. Um, I got a car. I got a Jeep, like a, a ATV vehicle. Yeah. And it is one of the single worst things I've ever handled, but also the best thing I've ever handled. <laughs> um, and I got a dog because they have a dog on the show. Yeah. The dog, the little dog toy, is a Chihuahua. And it has a handle on its back so a person can hold the Chihuahua. Oh, that's perfect. And you want to know what the Chihuahua's name is? Yes. Churro. That's the perfect name for a Chihuahua. It's a pretty good fucking name for a Chihuahua. It's a really good name for a Chihuahua. I kind of love him. Um, but anywho, uh, so if you want to follow us on all the socials, we're at CryptopediaCast. Um, email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com. Com, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. <laughs> we have a Patreon. Um, we mentioned in the episode, uh, Hodags are higher, which is $2 or higher. They get access to um, the show notes. Uh, Jackalopes get thanked on the podcast every week, and they also get access to random things. I'm considering making a spoken word album of uh, either Spice Girl songs or like. <clears throat> Just taking oh. now, that's what I call music, and doing a spoken word version of that. Okay. I wonder what the legality of releasing that on Spotify would be. So here's what you would do. Would I get hit with a cease and desist? You do that, upload it to YouTube, and make it a password or like private link, and then you also post it inside of the Jackalope channel on the Discord server. Well, I was going to release, I was going to release like a, uh, I was going to release what I was... I don't know if this is going to happen, okay, because this is going to take effort, but what I want to do is I want to make like a now that's what I call music commercial with me just flat, deadpanningly talking, <laughs> and then I want to release like audio files of the, the album. You have to take the commercial, steal the audio, and then when it comes to like the, the, the video clips of ki- kids singing... I have a green screen and, and some frames you can use. I have a green screen too. Just you sitting in front of a green screen, just uh, saying things. <laughs> I, I'm working on it. I need to think about it. I need to pick some songs. But I got the I when you said like I should do a whole album of or like a whole thing of uh, Spice Girls things, I was like. That would probably be some pretty it's fucking just fun you, content. 
in front of a computer with an angry cat. <laughs> just like, if you want to be my lover, you've got to get with my friends. Love. I don't remember the rest, but <laughs> like, just ah, oh, a real. You have to do that or do a high effort. Either works. I might I might do two versions, one of them uh with no backing track and one of them with me scatting the the music. Um Oh, and a third one so, that's you with headphones on or IEMs with sound canceling headphones over them and you're singing your heart out but you're only recording your voice, not the music. Cuz that's that's always fun when you hear those clips of like live performances but they they isolate the vocal track from like the singer because they're just singing over like a dub yeah oh that'd be great <laughs> that would basically be my my voice um anyways brandon do you want to thank our jackalopes we have a new one this week sure we will. well we had a new one two weeks ago but then i got sick but then you got, got sick, sick. uh like, yeah then i got high but different but then I got sick. But then I got mono. <laughs> but then I got mono. Uh, don't share bongs. Ba, ba, ba. Um, I can play that Ooh, on guitar. Um, <laughs> thank you to Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Young Flat Earth Creationist Consortium, exactly like science, but only better, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Keth, Kelso, and the new Will Smith. And, uh, oh, wait. Or is that the not of the no new? Longer, uh, he is the new one, but it looks like uh, the, it looks like uh, Lenwood changed his name back to Lenwood. Oh, sorry. So. Let, let's redo that. Thank you to Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, uh, Lenwood, uh, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Chicka chicka. Chicka chicka. Does he? Have, I think he West. dropped a full Desperado. Rap album. I think he did. Huh? Yeah, he he put out a, a rap album. Will Smith? Yeah. Will Smith has put out a lot of rap albums. That's like oh. what he originally was. Really? Rap yes. career. Will Smith and Jazzy Jeff. Oh, would you look at that? Would you Brandon. look at that? Brandon. <laughs> what? Big Willie he's, style came out in ninety seven. He sings the intro to fucking Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Brandon. Yeah, but I just thought that was a fun thing to do. I didn't know that was like because he did that for like professionally. <laughs> That's explicitly what he does. That in in uh, slap. Uh, what's his name? Chris Rock. Yeah. He goes slap, slap. You know, um, I do want to point out again, like how much effort has been spent we spend on talking about shit like that when like there's actual like existential crises happening in the world but like you know i don't know what you're talking about no well no. that's because we we don't yeah <laughs> wiki, wiki wild <laughs> wiki, wiki wild wild when i stroll into the wild wild west that was also will smith <clears throat> yeah I yes. also just thought that was a fun, I, was, I thought like in my head, I was like, oh, because he did the Fresh Prince thing, this is now like a fun thing, but it's a movie. That was Cool Mo D, Will Smith, and Cisco. Yeah, I just thought he was like a fun feature, you know? I didn't think he was like a, like a, like the guy. He's the first, he's the main person credited on it. I didn't the, know the that. The album, he is credited as the main person. I just thought it was a fun thing that he Drew did. Drew Hill and, and Cool Mo D are fucking featured artists. They're not even... <laughs> I just thought it was a fun thing that was like a studio's idea to like put him on there. Did you really? Yeah. Brandon. I didn't know he did it like for real. Brandon. <laughs> I know that was his thing. Okay. Uh, we have a Facebook group. If you want to rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff. Monster requests and stories. I'm I'm beaten <laughs> down by Brandon not knowing that Will Smith did rap more so than William Osman. <laughs> or sorry, uh, Otto Otto Otto. Uh, how did I forget his name already? Gene Otto. Gene Otto. That's it. There's well, Gene Otto. Gene Otto is like the fucking appetizer, and then you not knowing Will Smith. 
I, I don't length. know why I confused Gene Otto and William Osman. You combine Albert I, Osman. Oh, you no. combine uh, oh, no, Albert Osman. I was Osman talking about Will the Smith YouTuber well. William Osman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Oh, he's a funny. He's like an engineer and does funny things. Okay. Is uh. he the, he's not the one who like electrocutes himself, right? Oh, he does that too. Is he the one? There's that one dude who like does things purposely wrong, but he knows exactly. Oh how, like, no, that's you know who um, I'm talking. Uh, Medi, Medi something. His his channel is Electro Boom. Yeah, that one. The one where the dude like actively does things that are bad for his health. But yeah, like, but it, to to make it like an educational thing, like he's showing you what not what to do by showing you what not to do. Yeah, that's that's a way of doing it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. On Instagram, I'm mu2057. My Twitter is at jfdunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. And I want to make a point. Uh, somebody was like, hey, you could you could put your email there or you could put your, your ID there. And I'm like... I'm just going to put my email. He's like, yeah, that's because most people, some people might not want their email out there. And I was like, my email's so far out there at this point that, like, I don't give a shit. Wait, which, like, your real email? Yeah, well, because if you send a fucking email to my, my, to com, you're going to send a real email to my real email. And also, I have a fucking resume, Brandon, that's oh, publicly yeah. available. <laughs> Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommichael at gmail.com. Actually, my phone number used to be on the internet too, but I got rid of that. Yeah, that's a good thing to have fixed. Um, well, I also got a new number, so like if you ever find a phone number associated with me and you try to call, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. I did have my address in Rochester, I think, at one point. On the internet. Too. Don't put your address out there. Honestly, I just want to see. It, wait, if was it a PO gonna... box? Just you can do PO no, boxes. Don't do like a. It was real... an address. It was an address. Uh, something Goldenrod Lane. I don't remember. Rochester, New York. Kind of a piece of shit apartment. Anywho, um, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And as always, things are gonna get weird. Hmm.